Whether you're all about it or really, really, really against it, the Ninja Turtles reboot is just a few days away. So let's skip the build up and get it going. Here are seven things you didn't know about the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Problem. We all know that there have been quite a few Ninja Turtles movies and TV shows over the years. We even got a ninja rap out of the deal. Yo, it's the green machine, gonna rock the town without being seen. Have you ever seen a turtle get down? But most people don't know that this summer's release coincides with the 30th anniversary of the Turtles' debut. The first issue of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles came out way back in 1984, and in the original comics, the Turtles didn't wear different colors. They all wore red masks. The different colors for each turtle, along with their pizza obsession, were only added later on in the cartoons. The next thing you probably didn't know is that the turtle's origin story is linked to Daredevil. See, in Daredevil's origin story, Matt Murdock receives his superpowers after getting hit in the head by a radioactive canister. Well, it's that same canister that rolls down into the sewer, douses the turtles in radioactive ooze, and transforms them into Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Of course, creators Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird couldn't refer to Daredevil by name in the comic, but there's pretty much no denying what they were going for. And here's another thing you probably didn't know about the first issue, and heads up, this is a spoiler. Then again, if you haven't read the comics after 30 years, you're probably never going to. But uh, anyway, spoiler alert, all the same, Shredder actually dies in the first issue of the comics. Obviously, he comes back, but yeah, definitely a ballsy opening from the creators. Eastman and Laird launched their Mirage Studios with the first issue of TMNT. But you may not know that they originally picked the name Mirage because they didn't have an actual company, let alone a studio. The guys drew the first Ninja Turtles comic on their kitchen tables. It was funded mostly by a $500 tax refund and a loan from an uncle. To their surprise, the 3,000 issues that they printed were so popular they had to print 6,000 more, borrowing more money from the same uncle in the process. They made all the money back in the end, plus $200. Well, 200 plus the millions upon millions they've made from licensing deals in the years since. By the way, Kevin Eastman supposedly has a cameo in the new movie, so look out for him playing a doctor. <laughs> oh, that's like, uh, no. Getting into the Ninja Turtles movies, the new take on how they look is a far cry from what we got in the first movie from 1990. Jim Henson's Creature Shop created these turtles and the actor inside is not the guy providing the voice for any of the turtles except for Raphael. Corey Feldman actually did the voice for Donatello while Kevin Clash, who's famous for voicing Elmo and uh, you know some other things, was the voice and main puppeteer for Splinter. But you do get to see all four turtle actors without their costumes during the film. Cowabunga! That's Josh Pice, aka Raphael, in the back of the cab. Michelangelo, real name Michelin Sisti, is the Domino's delivery guy. This foot messenger is Leith Tilden, the guy who plays Donatello. Finally, David Foreman, who plays Leonardo, is one of the gang members in this fight scene between Casey and Tatsu. And he's in there somewhere. I promise. <laughs> Can't trust a narrator! And even though they weren't wearing extremely hot and claustrophobic turtle costumes with 60 pounds of animatronics built in, Shredder and Tatsu's voices are also dubbed. Master Shredder. After all, why pay one actor to do one role when you can pay two actors to do one role? If you haven't watched it in a while, you may not remember that the first Ninja Turtles movie has a decent amount of violence. It may seem tame to some of us today, but Playmates Toys refused to even make any action figures based on the movie because of the violence and language. That, along with a backlash from pissed off parents, led the producers to cutting down on the violence in the sequel drastically. They went to such an extreme that in the second movie, the turtles barely even use their weapons. Leonardo and Raphael actually never use theirs at any point in the entire movie. They just sort of have them for some reason. Along with the movies, there have also been a few different incarnations of the Ninja Turtles TV show over the years, and one of them included a lady turtle. A girl turtle? <laughs> a girl turtle! <laughs> yes, in the late 90s, Ninja Turtles The Next Mutation introduced Venus de Milo, a fifth member of the Ninja Crew. But she didn't last long and obviously isn't still around today. Rumor is they got rid of her fairly quickly because Peter Laird hated the character. I'll admit that adding a new turtle is a pretty lame gimmick to revive an aging franchise, but y'all know me. I'm not mad at those tasty turtle hoots. You can't milk a turtle! 
The new Ninja Turtles movie is hitting the reset button after the three previous ones we got back in the day, but you probably didn't know there was almost a fourth live-action movie in the late 90s. It was only canceled because the third movie was such a runny dump. <laughs> TMNT The Next Mutation was the working title, and it would have shown the ooze in the turtles and Splinter's bodies mutating them a second time. And there's even concept art you can find on the internet to show you what they would have looked like. Michelangelo's second mutation would have given him the ability to morph so he could have a more human appearance. Donatello would have developed psychic and telekinetic abilities, but the new powers would also deteriorate his vision, hence the fancy glasses. Leonardo would have been able to mutate his skin into different textures, although all we really get are what look like gauze bandages in this concept art. Raphael would have become Raptor Raph with all the claws and spikes you see here, which is perfect for a guy with a rage problem, and even Master Splinter would have mutated again. He'd double in size and would have a sort of Hulk thing going where he wouldn't be able to control his bigger, angrier self very well. After the movie got scrapped, they wound up using a lot of these ideas in the cartoons, but who knows? We might end up seeing some of this stuff on the big screen if the reboot does well enough for a sequel. <laughs> Get ready for sequels, sequels, sequels! That's it for today, but we know there are a lot of mixed feelings about the Michael Bayification of the Ninja Turtles, so let us know in the comments whether you're excited to see the new movie, if you're going to stay home and protest, or if you're going to hate watch it in secret and not tell any of your friends. Thanks for watching, but be sure to check out Cinefix.com and subscribe for more truish things about movies and sometimes mutated reptiles right here on Things You Didn't Know.